Good morning. Welcome to Wyckoff Assembly of God, your international church online. We're so glad you've joined us today. Maybe you want to just uh, send a link of this to a friend of yours or encourage somebody to go on our website and, and catch this because we believe that God wants to touch people all over this world. You know, we're, we're connected to so many different groups from Panama to, to Belgium to uh, Nigeria, I mentioned a couple of weeks ago, and there's several other countries there that are that are part of it, the Philippines and several other places that that God is just reaching out to through this international broadcast that we're doing through the, the internet. I'm so glad that we're able to do that. So glad we've come into your home or at your workplace or where, maybe you're sitting in your car, wherever you're at. I pray that God just blesses you and blesses you abundantly today and just pours into your life. You know, we've been doing uh, anything from shoe boxes to, which is helping uh, kids around the world for Christmas time, giving them a Christmas present. We've been doing, we're working towards Walter Hoving Home coming up. There's several other projects we've worked towards, like the hurricane victims and several other things. But we know that God wants to just reach people, and our goal is just to reach out to people. Our kids have been given to BGMC, and we just heard. Uh, Pastor Becky talk about it. She'll probably say it this morning that there is a place that kids didn't have a bathroom in the church and, and BGMC money helped do that. I'm thankful for our kids that have given to that. This is just excites me to watch how God just uses the whole body of Christ. It's what he does. You say, but I've got this area going on in my life. You know, my God still understands that. He cares even for the simple things. He cares for the small things. He knows exactly what you're going through right now. And I pray today, Lord Jesus, that you'll minister to that person that feels down and out or feels like they, nobody else cares about them or feels like, why am I even here? Lord, there's somebody there that's really struggling. And Lord, I ask that you just minister to them now in Jesus' name. Bring your peace that only you can bring. Bring that joy back that they thought they'd lost a long time ago. Bring it back into life. Lord, there's somebody else that doesn't even understand that joy. Lord, help them understand your joy, your peace, your incredible love that only you can give. Thank you for that today. How can I give and how can I be part of this ministry? Well, you can give in three different ways. You can give online or you can give through uh, sending in the mail or even uh, dropping it by the church. We have some people do. We're so thankful that you're part of that whole picture. We're going to sing unto the Lord. Part of our worship is singing unto the Lord. We're going to sing unto the Lord today and just glorify his holy name. Amen. Why don't you join us as we sing it to the Lord. No more are going to come in. For those of you who are online, bless the Lord. Thank you for joining us this Sunday morning here. So we're going to start off with prayer, and we're going to, we're going to offer up our hearts to the Lord and prepare our hearts for worship this morning. Amen? Amen. So dear Heavenly Father, we come to you in Jesus' name. We are grateful for all that you have done and all that you are doing in our lives and all that you're about to do in our lives, Father. So, Lord, we give you praise and glory this morning. We prepare our hearts, Lord, that no matter what has happened during the week, we set that aside right now. This time is strictly for you and you alone, Father. It's not what you can do for me because you've already done it all. You've already given the best of heaven this morning. And we just want to respond in love and worship to you this morning. So bless us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. While we all stand to our feet, the scripture says, let everything that has breath... Praise the Lord. And it also says, if we don't praise Him, the rocks and trees will. So you don't want to be out praised this morning, do you? Amen. So let's go. I'll praise in the valley, praise on the mountain. Surrounded. Let's pray. 
famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring dry bones to life And do what you are famous for What you are Make famous way. for Make way through the waters Walk me through the fire Do what you are famous for What you are famous for Shut the mouths of lions Bring dry bones to life what you are famous for, what you are famous for. I believe in his God, I believe in you. Come on, let's give him glory this morning. Come on, give him You know, as I was singing this song, as we were singing this song, the thought occurred to me, you cannot have a testimony without a test. In order for there to be a testimony, you need to go through some tests this morning. Let me tell you something. I've seen the faithfulness of God this morning. I've experienced the faithfulness of God this morning. It doesn't mean I've always been faithful, but he's been faithful, amen? So when we sing that chorus again, I want you to know he's going to do what he's famous for in your life. Just believe him this morning. So make way through the waters. Walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for. What you are famous for. Shut the mouth of lions. Bring dry bones to life. And do what you are famous for. What you are famous God of exceeding for. God of exceeding God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, Lord, you will never fail. Your name is powerful, your words unstoppable, all things are possible. God of exceedingly, God of exceedingly, God of abundantly, more than we ask or think, God, you will never fail. Lord, you are What you are famous for, what you are famous for. Make way through the waters, walk me through the fire. Do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. Shut the mouths of lions, bring dry bones to life. And do what you are famous for, what you are famous for. I believe. God, I believe. Amen. Yes, Lord. Walk us through the fire, Lord. Walk us through the fire. Part the raging sea. Part that raging sea, Lord. Come on, speak to those seas this morning. Jesus. Bodies be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on. Let's raise the dead this morning. Lord. Lord, come. I'm speaking to some dry this morning, come together right now in the name of Jesus. I'm speaking to some lost loved ones this morning. You're coming to Jesus in the name of Jesus. Let me tell you something. Arthritis has nothing on the name of Jesus this morning. Diabetes has nothing on the name of Jesus this morning. Yes, Lord. Let me 
tell you something. Your kids might be living like hell right now, but let me tell you something. God's going to take that hell out of them one day. Start believing it this morning. We're singing these songs. we got to start believing what we're singing this morning. Yes, God. Come on. Come on, join me. Let's start believing this morning. Let's start going to war for our kids. Let's start going to war for the things of God this morning. Some of you, you might say, why is the devil kicking me around? You're letting him. Stop letting him kick you around. That's the bottom line. He's a bully. But you have the name of Jesus this morning. Start believing it.
caused the mouths of the lions to be shut when Daniel was thrown in the lion's den for honoring God and not bowing to man and man's rules. He was the fourth man in the fire, was likened to the Son of Man. When the three Hebrew children were thrown into the fiery furnace, that's who God is. He goes to the fire with you. He walks with you. And not a thing, even though the fire blazed hot, and when the soldiers opened up that furnace, they fell dead. But those three Hebrew children walked out without smelling like smoke, without, a, without even a thread on their clothes, sinned. That's the kind of God that we serve today. Because they honored God and didn't bow to the laws of the land that were man-made, they honored their God first. That's what happens. When we honor God first, He'll walk with us through the fire. He'll shut the mouths of the lions. When we walk with God, He will speak to the dry bones. And He will say, yes, they can live. And He'll say, bones, you start coming together in the name of Jesus. So speak to the dead things in your life right now. Speak to those dead, dry bones and say, in the name of Jesus, begin to come together. Muscles and sinews and fibers begin to give life to these dry, dead bones in the name of Jesus. When Abraham thought there was no way possible for us, for the promise of God to be fulfilled, God brought it forth. So don't you say the promise, God promised me this and he's going to come through. Oh, he's coming through. He's going to come through because that's the kind of God he is. Praise him now in Jesus' name. Even if our God 
doesn't bring us out. It's okay, because he's still our God, and we're going to be with him. I know, oh, I just plummeted some of you right now, but listen to it. So much faith in that statement that even if God doesn't do what I think he should, I'm still going to stand on his word because he knows best. He is the way maker. He is moving. He is moving, always moving, always hearing, always attending to the cry of his people. And he is moving. Trust me, you may not see it. You may not feel it. But you don't go by that. You walk by faith. Faith in Jesus Christ. Who will not fail? It's not in his nature to fail. He cannot fail. He is the almighty. He is the all-powerful. He is the all-knowing. He is everywhere all at the same time. He's the healer. He's the way maker. He is the one who speaks peace in the midst of the storm. Oh, are you getting it today? He is here. He is here to meet your need, whatever it is. He's the son of righteousness who rose with healing in his way.
the darkness. Lord, uh, the people in, have, that have been affected by Milton and Helene, Lord, some of them are still in the dark without power. Some have lost everything. Lord, I pray that you would bring hope to them right now in Jesus' name. You would strengthen every lineman. You would strengthen every rescue aid worker that's there handing out, whether it's just handing out a bottle of water or whether it's handing food or whether it's going with a person through the rubble of their home, that you would be the hands and the feet on the ground there. You would strengthen those workers, but those that have lost, whether they've lost little or lost a lot to them, Lord God, it's so important that they've lost. Bring hope and bring peace and show them how they can rebuild in Jesus' name and minister. They're so tired, some of them minister strength. Lord, just be there. Some of them are so scared. So scared because of the tornadoes that ripped through and of other things that they have no control over. But Lord, show them you are the master. The master of all things. And you were there walking beside them in Jesus' name. Lord, we lift up. We lift up Israel to you. Yesterday, Lord, was one of the most important days in their history. The day of atonement. The day of atonement means repenting of sin. Many of them went and repented of sin. Many of them fasted. They followed the, the way of the law, Lord God. They followed the way of the law. Some are Messianic Jews, Lord God. They know the true meaning of atonement. But Lord, many do not. But Lord, we pray that there, you would open their eyes, bring revelation knowledge to them. But also, Lord, that you would stand at the, at the gate, so to speak. That your warring angels would be there surrounding Israel. That you would protect. That you would even guide their armies, Lord. Guide their missiles to do, Lord, what needs to be done. But also, Lord, that you would deter every missile, every every shot that is fired to come against them, that you would deter that and turn it around. Lord, that you would bring peace. Lord, there are probably so many people there that they don't, some don't even know why they're fighting. But Lord, you would, you would pour out such a wave of love that it would wash out the hatred on both sides, Lord God. That it would wash out the hatred that is there. That's been passed down from generation to generation. And we speak curse to that hatred. And that it be broken off now in Jesus' name. Let there be mediation. Let there be talks open. Let hostages be released, Lord God. Whatever needs to be done, Lord. Let it be done in that whole region over there. Show your hand to be mighty once again. To do in that area what you are famous for in the Old Testament where they said someone's telling secrets in the camp and somebody said, no, it's the God of the children of Israel. That's speaking to them about what we're going to do even before we do it. So God, do that once again. Thwart lands of the enemy and bring victory in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you that even when we don't see it, you're moving. When we don't feel it, you're working. Because we walk by faith. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Praise you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Turn to your neighbor and say, My God is still working. My God is still working. Can you find somebody to shake hands with? We haven't done that in a while. Shake hands with somebody and greet them in the Lord today. Full of rice. The state of Mizoram in northeast India is slowly climbing out of poverty despite their lack of income. Since the gospel first came to the area, believers in Jesus have practiced local tradition called a handful of rice. <coughs> Those preparing meals each day set a tradition called a handful of rice. Okay. The preparing of meals each day, set aside a handful of uncooked rice and give it to the church of Mizoram. Because they are poor by the world standard, I've given millions to missions and sending missionaries around the world. <coughs> Many in their home state have come to know Christ. It goes on. Second Corinthians 8, Paul described a similar challenge Believers in Macedonia were poor, but they didn't keep them from giving joyfully and abundantly. They saw their giving as a privilege and gave even beyond their ability. To partner with Paul, they understood they were merely stores of God and resources by giving and show them their trust in him, who provides for all needs. Paul used Macedonians to encourage the Corinthians to have the same approach in giving. The Corinthians excelled in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, and complete earnestness in love. Know they need to excel the same grace of giving. Like the Macedonians and the believers, we too can reflect our Father's generosity by giving out of what we have. That is coming, that is coming from the daily word, not my Bible. Anyway, thank you, Lord, for everything that you have provided for us, more than we ever expected. Father, bless and guide and protect us as we live to see another day. Father, as we move to this section of the program this morning, by our tithes and offerings, we give earnestly to you and willingly. And let us also be good steward over your finances for the preparation of your soon coming king and also for the church. Amen. So yesterday we had a great time of prayer and being part of the million women gathering from Washington, D.C., those of us that were here. Um, it was just an awesome time of prayer. Tonight, prayer meeting at 6 o'clock. Okay, here downstairs in the fellowship hall. Uh, prayer meeting tonight. Wednesday night, 7.15, Who is Jesus with Rafael Ramos. 
Next week, missions and BGN Sunday, if we want to bring in our buckets, uh, our little barrels, and we want to uh, fill the bucket for missions in the back. I have to say that I just saw a thing come across where for BGMC, you know, we talk about materials and stuff like that. Guess what? BGMC money went to a place in Asia where they had no bathrooms for the school, and BGMC money was used to build five bathrooms for a school of, I don't, I forget how many kids. So your BGMC money is going literally around the world to show people that we care about them. Because this is Pastors Appreciation Month and we love our pastors. We adore them. We love the work that they're doing for God's kingdom. We love their encouragement. We love their prayers and how they encourage us when we are down and out. So we want to show them how much we love them, how much we appreciate them. So on October 27, mark your calendars, we are going to do Pastor's Appreciation Day. We, we are going to meet downstairs and show them how much we love them, how much we appreciate them. There will be three buckets, one for Pastor Becky and Pastor Wes, one for Pastor Tommy, and one for Pastor Moses and Elizabeth. So please bring, even if it's a small little thank you card to show them how much you love them, how much you care. I'm sure they're, they're already grateful, but we want to show them how grateful we are and encourage them to continue to do what God has placed in their hearts. We invite our children to go downstairs and hear the word on their level. Father, open their hearts to be receptive and minds alert. Let seeds be planted that will bring forth fruit for your kingdom in their lives. Lord, let your anointing rest upon our children's church leaders. Pour out of them everything that the kids need to hear. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to talk to you today about in the storm. You know, our, there's been a lot of hurricanes and a lot of other storms that have, that have beaten across our U.S. and I've talked to a friend of mine. I was actually on his, his prayer time the other day with his church, and, and I just encouraged them that up here in the north, we've been praying for them, and his church is in St. Pete down there, and he said he had just a couple words talked about in the storm, and he had gave a couple words there, and, and the Lord just quickened my heart about that, and, and this is what the Lord began to talk to me about was that we oftentimes are in storms. It may not be the rain coming down because right now here in Wyckoff, we haven't seen rain in a few weeks. It's been a while, but it's, there's other storms that go on. There's some things that you go through, struggles you go through that, that are incredible and you, you don't understand what's, what's all around you and it just doesn't make sense. But in the midst of those storms, God gives us some incredible things and he begins to talk to us. And now uh, there are some characters in the Bible called Paul and Silas, and, and I say characters because that's, they, they literally began to evangelize and do missionary journeys across uh, a lot of different areas. And, and one of the things they were talking and doing was they were going to evangelize in a town. And as they were going to evangelize the town and they were beginning to share the gospel, as they began to do that, there's, there's this, there's this demon-possessed woman that begins to come along there and begins to uh, just be a nuisance to them, totally a nuisance to them. I don't know about you, but sometimes we, we need to be sensitive to God and what he's doing and, and how he's portraying and what he's getting ready to do. Now, let's take a look at scripture there because we're going to deal with Acts, the 16th chapter. I'm going to start with verse 16 there. It says, as we're going to the place of prayer, where we met by slit. Now, <laughs> that's interesting. They're going to a prayer meeting. And they're met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by fortune telling. That's, she, she was this fortune teller. She could tell and do all sorts of stuff and people would pay money. And I know that that still happens today. There are people that do that. Be careful doing that. In fact, stop doing that. I'll just put it straight out there. Don't do that because when you do that, you say, I don't need God. I'm going to go to this other thing. And you replace God immediately, and you allow the enemy to come into your soul. Well, that's just a sideline there a little bit. Let's go on back on the scripture here. She followed Paul and us, crying out, These men are servants of the Most High God who proclaim to you the way of salvation. 
And this she kept doing for many days. Paul, having become greatly annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out of her that very hour. Uh, there are several reasons why Paul was probably bothered by this whole situation. Uh, her indication of what she said there uh, literally indicates, who proclaimed to you the way of salvation. That in indicates there's, there's other ways to go in salvation. If we go back to the original language, it means a way. There's other ways you could do it, is what she's saying. That's one thought. Or she was a constant bother, like somebody standing out in front of, uh, let's take it for instance, uh, outside of Hobby Lobby. And uh, they're just constantly telling people, yelling ahead, people going in saying, this is the great store, you ought to come in here, you ought, this is the place to be. People are just going to go like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm going to stay away from this. Pretty soon the manager is going to come out there and say, I need you to move on. You're disturbing the, the customers coming in here. You're disturbing other people coming in here. And that's what began to happen. Paul couldn't even begin to walk and talk, and he couldn't even begin to share without somebody interrupting. Oftentimes, when you share the gospel story, it's not something somebody's out screaming about. It's usually one-on-one -on -one that you, you build a relationship, you found some time to talk to them, and you began to share the gospel to them. And it, it may be some time, you know, uh, I've, I've heard of people doing things in, in various places and meeting people after work and say, Ken, let's just get a cup of coffee and we, let's talk some. I want to just share with you. If you'd like to do that, let me know. And just sharing on the side, not, not so much taking the work time. You have to be careful of that. But literally moving on the side of things and, and literally doing that. Now, this lady was not doing that. She was talking and directing so much that Paul didn't have a chance to proclaim. Paul didn't have a chance to even share. Uh, you don't need the devil to proclaim for you. Sometimes we think that we need that, and that's not what you need. Uh, you, you need to conquer the situation that you're in, and it's the word of your testimony, Scripture says. The word of your testimony that literally changes lives. Revelation 12, 11 says, And they have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. For they love not their lives even unto death. Now the word of your testimony, let's get this straight. Some people have misused this. They think it's everything that comes out of their mouth. No, 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 no. That's not what that means. Their testimony is the things that they bring glory to God on. The things that they begin to uplift God and, and how God has changed their life. That's our testimony. A testimony, you can't have a testimony without a test, somebody once said. you got to have that test, that test that goes on there. And it's part of the whole picture. You have to trust God. Uh, but when our owners saw that their hope was gained, you know, Paul cast this demon out. And all of a sudden the owners saw that their hope of gain or the hope of getting money was gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged the marketplace before the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, these men are Jews and they are disrupting our city. They advocate customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to accept or practice. They're, they're using all sorts of lies and all, twisting all sorts of things just to get them to you know, if we can't have our money, we're going to take care of the people that did that is what they're doing. They advocate customs not lawful to us as Romans to accept it or practice. The crowd joined in attacking them. You know, it's easy to stir up a crowd. We've seen that happen all over the place. It's easy to stir up a crowd. Some people are, are just doing it because everybody else is doing it. It's easy to stir up the crowd. The crowd joined them in attacking them and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave orders to beat them rots. Now, Paul has, has literally delivered this lady of this demon possession, and because of that, he gets beaten. Hmm. Because of his good works, he gets beaten. I've oftentimes heard people say that in the midst of the, the what I'm trying to help, in the midst of the storm, that, that, that there are people that just literally attacked me all over the place. Well, that's what Paul went through. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, and they threw them in the prison, ordering the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this order, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in stocks. And they're, they're, they're not just in prison, but they're literally 
they're literally chained down with these, these wooden stocks that are hooked on there and they can't move and they can't go any place and they're, people are afraid they're going to escape and they're, that's how they're literally. Uh, this has become the most challenging time to trust God. And it is. During the attack is the most challenging time to trust God. Put in jail for no good reason according to the law. That was actually against the law. They, they were severely beaten. They'd gone through all this stuff. Their handlers or the pimps of the girl were suddenly losing a lot of money. So they no longer had the power of the devil and now possessed the spirit of God. She possessed the spirit of God. She no longer had the power of the devil, but she now possessed the spirit of God. So she is a changed person by the power of God. And, and the people around her aren't happy because they're not making money. People around her aren't happy because they're not getting what they want to get out of the situation. When in the midst of the storm, one of the things is we begin to praise or worship God, our worship unto God. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. You know, our worship starts before the trouble starts, by the way. Our worship doesn't just, we don't just go into a situation and go, okay, you know, God... I'm going to be that, that hero in that situation and everybody's going to listen to me and everybody's going to understand that, that I'm the person that serves a mighty God and understands, you know, our worship starts way before we get to there. We, we, before we get to that entrapment, before we get to that, that imprisonment, before we get to that place that, that everybody's coming against us, our worship starts way, way before that. Worship doesn't start in the midst of trouble. Romans 12, verses 1 and 2 says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercy of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. Paul wrote this later on. Holy and acceptable God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing, remember that testing we talked about a few minutes ago, you may discern what is the will of God, what is, what is good, and acceptable and perfect. Worship is literally a living sacrifice unto God. It's a holy manner. It's worship is acceptable unto God. It's not reflecting the world. It's not reflecting what's going on in the world. You don't need to need some to someone to read your future or someone to help you or guide you along. You don't need a fortune cookie. We ate at Chinese restaurant the other night and I opened up the, the fortune cookie and my fortune cookie just had a sliver in there and wasn't even seeing the whole thing and I'm like I'm laughing at it thinking to the sermon like I don't we don't need those things those are things you look at and go yeah 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 and you move on but you don't need that that's not what you grasp to lead you and guide you what you grasp to lead you and guide you is the things of God I'm a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is my spiritual worship. It's my worship unto God. Their worship did not start in prison. Their worship started way ahead of that. Uh, you're not reflecting the world. You don't need all the things of the world. You don't need the extra things that are somebody's literally their, their pat on the back or their recognition or anything else. Uh, our worship is going to be tested. And the testing helps us understand God's will for your life. Paul and Silas could not have begun to, to sing their worship in a dirty, musty, rodent territory. They couldn't have done that. They, they couldn't have begun to do those things unto God and begin to worship like that because it didn't start there. It started way ahead of time. Paul says, this is discern what the will of God is in your life. So many people ask what the will of God is in your life. And what is the will of God? It is what is, it, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. It's maybe three levels. I don't care how you look at it. Those things, I need to find what is good, acceptable, and perfect for God. I need to do those things and my life must reflect those things so that when I get into the prison, when I get in that situation, God can literally use me and guide me and I'll be not just for me getting out of the situation, but I'll be able to help others and guide others throughout all those situations. The prisoners listened because their worship indeed 
was of God. It reflected who God was. They could sense this presence of God as, as Paul and Silas began to just begin to sing unto the Lord, as they began to glorify God. The worship wasn't the singing. The worship had started in their lives and what they were showing the worth of God and who God was because they had given all to God. Be faithful in God. In the midst of the storm, be faithful unto God. And suddenly there was a, a great earthquake, so the foundations of the prison were shaken immediately. All the doors were open, and everybody's bonds were unfastened. Those stocks they'd been put in, they were totally unfastened. When the jailer woke and saw that the prison doors were open wide, he drew his sword and, and about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried out in a, with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are here. Now, Paul and Silas could have ran. They could have said, hey, we got work. Doors are up. Let's get out of here. Let's go. Get away from this whole place. This is crazy what, what we've been put into. And let's just run. But no, they were faithful unto God. You need to sense how God is leading you through that storm. And there may be some things God says, just hold on. Just stay the, stay the course, st work through this, hold on to what you're doing. If they had left, they would have missed the most critical time that they could have ministry on. All the street ministry, trying to proclaim the gospel, didn't mean anything because they had this giant opportunity with prisoners and the jailer and his whole household. They had this incredible time that they could share. If they had ran, they would have missed God's timing. I need to know God's will for my life, but I need to understand his good and acceptable and perfect. And I need to be through the testing. I need to understand that and holding fast and, and being faithful unto God through all these things that, that God is going to lead me. God is going to guide me. God is going to direct my pathway all the way through. I need to stay steady in the midst of the storm. Recognize who God is. When the jailer woke and saw the prison doors were open, he drew his sword, about to kill himself. We had read that. Then he, <coughs> and the jailer called for the lights and rushed in after Paul says, don't harm yourself. And in trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas. And then he brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? And they said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you'll be saved. You and your household, God gets the glory. That's right. The recognition of God is that God gets the glory. God gets the glory. In the midst of the storm, I praise him. In the midst of the storm, I give him the glory. In the midst of the storm, I'm faithful unto him. In the midst of the storm, I follow after and sensitive to him. I trust in him. Trusting God in the midst of the storm is an incredible task. Trusting God, praising God, all those things. Your worship to God will lead others to recognize him. Your life shows and illuminates the real God. How will you pass the test in the midst of the storm? How will you proceed through all those things? How will you make it? How will it happen in your life? What's going to be? What are you going to do? What are you going to do in the midst of the storm? Some of you are going through some heavy storms right now, and, and other people, you don't even see them. They're watching what you're doing. How are you going to respond or what you're going to do? Are you going to get upset? Are you going to fall apart? Are you going to, are you going to go off in another direction? Are you going to stand firm in those situations and say, God, in the midst of the storm, we're going to keep pressing on. It may feel like I don't have anything left whatsoever. But God, I know that I still have you. I still have you, God. And without you, there is nothing else. Because when I leave this earth, I'm not leaving with all the things. I'm either leaving with you, God, or I'm not leaving with you. And I want you, God. That's what I want. I want all of you. I want to find what your acceptable, perfect will is. I want to find and, and literally understand who you are. I want to find what is good. It's hard to find in the world around us right now, but I want to find what's good. Let's pray today. My friend, if you're, you're struggling inside and saying, I'm in the midst of a storm, Pastor, and I just, I, I just don't know which way to turn, hold steady. 
Hold steady in the midst of the storm. Don't do anything drastic. Don't fall apart. Hold steady. Hold steady in the midst of that storm. God's got a plan for your life right now. And he just wants you to hold steady. Shackles may be getting ready to come off. Prison doors may be getting to open wide. And when it does, he still wants you to hold steady. Instead of going off like something else, he wants you to stay steady <clears throat> because there are other people that have been watching you, that have been waiting to be ministered to, and he wants you to do that. Heavenly Father, I thank you for those who have watched the day, those who have shared today. Lord, to that one that may not know you as Lord and Savior, and may say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart and life today. Forgive me of all my sins. I want to follow after you. Like the jailer said, what do I do to be saved? Lord, they're asking you to come into their heart and life. Lord, they want to make you Lord of their life. They want to follow after all your ways and, and proclaim your good news and, and follow who you are, read your word, understand you. Help them to do that. Lord, there might be somebody else that's struggling with, with just going through the storm. They don't even know which way to turn. They feel like they've lost everything. And it may not be a weather storm. It may be another kind of storm that they're facing right now. But God, you know exactly what they need. You know exactly what they're going through and help them to stay steady in you and to follow after your ways. That Lord Jesus, you've got a plan. You have a plan. And their, your plan for their life is incredible. It means that we can have hope eternally. It means that there's some great things coming on the horizon that we haven't even begun to taste of or understand. God, you're releasing the prison doors on some. And they're saying, do I run? Do I, what do I do at this point in time? And, and the, the first thing is just to go screaming all over the place. But Lord, you say, hold steady. So they're going to hold steady right now. And they're going to just say, God, what do you want me to do? And yet there might be somebody right near there. that said, I've been thinking about committing suicide. Or I've been thinking about giving it all up. And Lord, you're going to use that person to minister to the other person use my friend watching right now to minister to somebody else. Help them to stay faithful in all that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you today.